Hello folks, my name is Josh Taylor and I'd like to welcome you to the 12th annual Telling Tales Festival and our first ever virtual gathering. Whether you are a veteran fan who has been to the festival or whether this is your very first time joining us, we are so happy to see how stories connect us no matter how far apart we live. Speaking of where we live, the Telling Tales Festival happens in a place where people have lived and told stories for thousands of years. It is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, the Huron-Wendat, and the Neutral Peoples. Today, it is home to the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Six Nations of the Grand River, and to many other Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. We recognize our responsibility to learn about their rich history so that we can better understand our roles as caretakers, neighbors, and friends. With a good heart and mind, we honor the sacred Indigenous tradition of storytelling by presenting our program today. Miigwech, Nyawe, and thank you. Hi everyone, this episode is called History and Mystery, writing character, time, and place. Today, we are going to get tips about how to put ourselves in another's shoes, especially if those shoes mysteriously find themselves traveling back in time. Speaking of mysteries, the mystery of how to win books from telling tales has been solved. Do you have a favorite Canadian mystery or history writer? All you have to do is share their name in the comment section before November 15th and you'll be entered in a draw to win a book from one of the authors I'm about to introduce. Up first, we have Jennifer, who is here to give us the recipe on how to structure a story. For Jennifer Maruno, the recipe all started with a pickle. She realized in grade school that she was destined to be a writer when her story won a contest sponsored by the Bix Pickle Company. They awarded her a year's supply of pickles a tour of the Bic Pickles plant and the Green Pickle Bike. She's come a long way since then, having published eight books, several of them historical fiction. Her latest is called Until Niagara Falls, and it is about walking the tightrope of friendship. Hello, aspiring writers from Telling Tales. My name is Jennifer Maruno. I write historical fiction for middle grade and young adult readers. You know, writing historical fiction is a lot like baking a cake. You see, you need three basic ingredients. There's flour, and that tends to be the dry, kind of uninteresting facts about history. Then there's the eggs, and that's the characters, the things that are alive. Admittedly, some of the eggs are cracked. And then there's the milk. And the milk runs through the entire cake, and that's the plot. I'm sure you've heard the expression, never cry over spilled milk. Well, when writing historical fiction, someone has to spill the milk and someone usually has to cry. Now, the important thing about historical fiction is making sure your setting really allows the people to believe that you're back in history. And setting is what takes people out of the world that they're in as they're reading your book into the world that exists inside your book. Now, setting has a lot of things that are important to it. For instance, if it's a house, you have to know what kind of house it is. And you have to know the name of the street. You even know the name of the town, even the name of the province, the country, or wherever it is that you're placing your setting. Outside the house, there should be things such as a park, Maybe there's a school nearby, a grocery store, a variety store. Whatever is part of that setting must be true to the time. For instance, in 1960s, baseball parks were popular. There's a lot of baseball in my books. After all, I am a Blue Jay fan, and you have to know that sports at the time are different as time passes on. Other things that are important inside your house for instance, is the kitchen. Now the kitchen changes so much over time. At one time there were no microwaves. 
people weren't barbecuing. Well, I guess they were in the Stone Ages, but they weren't barbecuing in the 1940s. A barbecue is a very interesting thing to go to. And it's usually people came from all over to barbecue something very big. They weren't throwing a couple of hamburgers on the back like we do today. Other things that are important about writing your novel for setting is making sure that you do have the correct clothes. People didn't always wear what they're wearing today. Girls didn't wear bikinis in the 1960s and even a two-piece bathing suit then was considered to be quite exciting. Boys wore running shoes, high top running shoes, and girls often wore bathing caps when they went in to swim. It's interesting how times have changed. Research is important when you do settings for historical fiction. Why don't you try writing just a page or so about a special place that comes from your past. Sit down and think about something that you really enjoy doing a long time ago, well not even that long ago, say maybe a couple of years ago, and start thinking about where it occurred, what you were doing, why you liked it, but then start thinking about did you eat before you did this? What did you eat? What kind of food? What kind of food was popular then? Did you wear special clothes for what you were doing? Were you looking forward to wearing something special? Tell me what the room looked like that you were doing it in. Or maybe you were outside. Maybe you were playing baseball, who knows? Maybe you were swimming. The thing is, is you need to be aware of your setting. So when you write, always make sure your setting is an important part of your story. Thanks, Jennifer. Looking forward to hearing about those eggs from Sylvia. Are you thinking about the ingredients for your setting? How it might look? The details of the time period and what might be in the background? Next up, we have Krista with a funny game called The Mystery Box. Hi folks, my name is Krista and I'm here today to teach you a game called Mystery Box. And you know what? I think I need a little help with this one. Oh Josh! Hi Krista, I'm ready for a mystery and a box. This game is great for up and coming actors and improv artists. It is going to help you think quickly on your feet and say the first things that come to your head. Remember, you don't have to be funny, but you'll find the more you do it, the funnier it may become. So, you can play this game at home. And it's helpful to have a box, but not necessary. You may want to get a parent or friend to help you find some pictures of really old objects that you have never heard of or seen before. You can uh, look online and print them out, you and your friend. We'll take turns pulling out a picture and then you have to tell your partner three things. What the object is used for, then you'll have to demonstrate how you use it, and finally you have to say what the object is called. Remember, don't think too hard about it, you want to be quick. Okay, I'll go first. Oh, well... I think I know exactly what this is. This is called a clipper tripper. Yes, it is. And you know what it's used for? What's that? Cutting elephants' toenails so they don't trip over them. And how it's used is you just take the elephant's foot and you put it in the grinder and you just shave off those toenails. The Clipper Tripper. Your turn. It sounded like a commercial. That was great. All right. Uh, On sale. Uh, Take this. Thank you. What do you got? Uh, it's a <clears throat> cashew cannon, and it wow shoots cashews for people to eat. So I would take it and 
Shoot it. Ah, like bam. Squeeze it. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, a cashew cannon. Cashew cannon. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. It is a really great way to learn how to think quickly on your feet. So I hope you play it at home. Bye. That was so much fun, Krista. Now, as promised, Sylvia joins us with more explanation about the ingredients you might need to whip up a thrilling mystery. Sylvia McNichol has been writing stories ever since she was in grade four. Now she has over 35 books published, several awards, and has traveled all over Canada, as well as South Korea and Colombia, to share her writing and reading excitement. Mystery abounds in her latest book, Body Swap, A Fatal Collision. But who's to blame? Two souls switch in search of justice. Hi, my name is Sylvia McNichol and I love reading mysteries. When I was judging for the Arthur Ellis Crime Writing Awards, I had to read over 70 mysteries in two months. I was reminded about how much you learn about writing from reading. What I learned is that mysteries don't have to be about murders. There doesn't have to be a body on the first page. So much so that when I wrote The Great Mistake Mysteries and Body Swap, I created more of a puzzle to be solved by the main character and the reader. In any story, mystery, or puzzle, there are three main elements. There's the plot, the setting, and the character. The plot is the what and how. In a mystery, there's always going to be a puzzle to be solved and the writer knows that the driving force or narrative hook will be that puzzle and the ending is always going to offer the solution. So what I would suggest to you mystery writers out there is that you begin with an ending in mind and I'm going to give you a writing prompt. This is what your villain might say. I never meant to hurt anyone. The setting is the where and the mood for your story. It can be a planet light years away, a medieval castle, or your neighborhood, like in The Great Mistake Mysteries, or a carnival in the sky, like in Body Swap. The character is the who and why, and the who is way more exciting if they're not a police officer or detective, because then the situation is unique to them. Also, they may not want to solve the crime. The why. The why is the driving force, the stakes that you give them to compel your main character to solve the crime. It could be that they will be blamed or perhaps someone they love will be harmed. The characters also involve the suspects and the villains, the who and why of your mystery. You need at least three strong suspects for your puzzle, and each of them have a why, the compelling reason that makes them commit the crime or the motive. The difference is the villain will have a deep, dark secret that they will reveal at the end. First thing you need is names for your characters. Choose ones that mean something to you, your friends, cousins, sports car, or an actor. Look up their meanings on the internet. The next thing you need to do is think about the outside of your character. Give them some interesting details. A tattoo, a scar, a limp, two different colored eyes. These could all be clues in your puzzle. Think even harder about what's on the inside of your character. Something about their friends and family, but more importantly, what do they want in each part of the story? And what are the difficulties they need to overcome to get it? The harder they need to work to get what they want, the stronger the story. In Body Swap, Halle is my main character. I was thinking of a younger Halle Berry. Her father is Scottish, her mother is Jamaican, she's got a sister. She loves her family. When she grows up, she wants to have a family too. But right now in the beginning of this book, she wants to know if Kale likes her and she really wants to have Kale as a boyfriend. Susan, I wanted it to be an old timey name. Did you know that in 1955, there were 47,000 babies named Susan? But my mom had a best friend who was a very active senior driving around traveling and her name was Susan. So I patterned Susan after her. 
What Susan wants most is to be closer to her family, and mostly she wants to avoid going into a long-term care facility. Eli is short form for my God in Hebrew. My Eli is a shapeshifter, and in the beginning he's an old man, then he's a carnival operator, then he's an Asian waitress, and then he is a Chinese crested dog. And do you notice that dog spelled backwards is God. What Eli wants most is for Hallie to put down her cell phone. He also wants Hallie and Susan to get along and work together. Saji Motors is a what that actually becomes a character. In Body Swap, Susan and Hallie exchange bodies in a car accident. And Saji Motors is a villain that knows the deep dark secret which could stop these accidents from occurring. As the story progresses, the main character should become more desperate to solve the crime. Perhaps there's a time crunch or the crime reoccurs. In the beginning, Hallie blames the whole accident on Susan so she doesn't care to get involved in solving the puzzle. Then she realizes unless she pursues a different solution, she will not get her old body back. The time crunch is Christmas. She wants to be home by Christmas. And then another fatal car accident happens, which really pushes her and Susan to solve the crime. As the mystery draws to its conclusion, the suspects become more suspicious. The villain will finally reveal their deep, dark truth. The hero will find the solution and grow as a result of realizing which of their assumptions were wrong. I hope you read and write a lot of mysteries and that you've enjoyed today's writing mystery workshop. Thanks, Sylvia. We'll post Sylvia's suggestions on how to structure your mystery story on the Telling Tales event page in case you miss any of her tips. You will want to refer to them because we'd love to see you post your historical fiction, mysteries, or thrillers to the Telling Tales Creativity Club. You never know who might look at them. Now, that we've had a good review on how to structure the character, time, and place of a story, let's check out another way we can exercise our imaginations. Up next, we have Lisa Pejuan Namura, who is going to show us how to make a storytelling collage with historical images from around your house. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Pijuan Namura, also known as Girl Can Create, and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about collage. Collage is the art of cutting and pasting, of taking photographs, old papers, even recyclables, and making a new complete piece of art. What you're going to need today is a glue stick, a pair of scissors, and one piece of paper that you're going to collage onto. Your collage papers are going to consist of anything, really. I'm sure you have paper around your house. Start off with different colored construction papers. I have blue, green, red here. Um, go into your recycling bin and you can find old papers that you can scribble on. I like just making patterns and using bright colors. Sometimes I find things like an old bag and I just draw on them. I also find that in your recycling bin, you could find things like old flyers that have good things like popsicles that remind me of summer on them. You can use old maps. We have magazines. Those are the greatest. I found this really exciting image right here. And I think I'm gonna use that as well in my collage. We also could use old books that your parents aren't using anymore and things that have come into the mail. I got this from Japan and I really like this right here. If there's any old photographs around your house of people that you don't know and your mom and dad have said, yep, yeah, go ahead, use it. Feel free to do that. And sometimes just plain old cardstock. And then we have images that we've cut out because we really just like what they look like. And of course, you can just draw. This guy is also gonna be in my collage today. So, let's get started. One of the first things we do is we cut all of our images. 
basically collages playing with paper. You also think of colors. So right now I like the green, blue, and red. Think about the stories that I create when I do these. So I imagine that these ladies are actually aliens. They're actually walking on our friend, the bearded iguana. So you can imagine that all of a sudden one day, the giant cat lady appeared. We're all like in a crazy world. And you could go on and make a whole story about that. I'm just gonna keep on going with this and uh, I'll show you my final image. There we have it, my friends. The magical cat woman. Get your glue sticks. Get your paper. Get your scissors. Can't wait to see your collages. Thank you so much, and back to you, Josh. Thanks, Lisa. I love making collages. Except I always get glue and paper stuck to my hands and fingers. Now, I bet you have lots of ideas of how to get started as a writer. Historical fiction, mystery, whatever your thing is, just like Jennifer and Sylvia say, just get started. By uploading your work to the Telling Tales website, Creativity Club, we would love to read your work. Also remember to post your favorite mystery or history author in the comments section to enter a draw to win a copy of either Sylvia or Jennifer's featured titles. Thank you again for tuning in and keep writing. Thanks for joining us and remember to visit our website for more events and to upload your artwork, your writing, your videos, and your ideas to the Telling Tales Creativity Club. Telling Tales is all about the joy of discovering how stories connect us. Tell us what you thought of this episode by filling out the survey on the Telling Tales website and you could win a book from one of today's authors. See you again.